How's it going everyone? I am Dylan, this is Carlo, this is All You Can Board, and today we are doing a video that we're tying into uh, price points again because we got such great feedback um, and response from the last video we did. Uh, clearly, you know, people, I feel like we didn't even realize that sometimes it's, we talk about a lot of games, we don't always talk about the price of these games, and like, you know, some people are looking for something, like to splurge on a game, and some people are looking to like get something small because they just have, you know, an extra $30 and they want to get something new, right? Yeah. So we decided that we're going to do a game that's catered to people who are looking to get a smaller game, or maybe maybe it's not a smaller game, but just a game that is $30 or under. So $30 is the max. That's Canadian dollars, by yes, the way. Yes, Canadian dollars. So if, you, if you're uh, watching from the States, for instance, these will actually be cheaper for you, which is great. Um, but we've done it into five different categories. We've each picked a game for these five categories. So there'll be 10 games total. Um, the idea is that we can basically uh, revisit this in the future with different categories, different price points, uh, depending on what you guys want to see. If, if it turns out that you really want to see what we think of different genres, for instance, like what's your favorite worker placement game under, under $30 or not favorite, but just a, you know, a game you recommend under $30 mm -hmm. or, you know, a tableau builder, whatever the case may be, we can feature it that way too. But uh, just to specify, this is not like our favorite game for each of these categories. We've just picked some games that we think we want to recommend and highlight. And if we did this video in six months, it might be a completely different uh, set of games for all these categories. This is just a way for us to get more games out to you guys, more recommendations, um, and talk about some games that we really enjoy that maybe if we were only talking about our favorites, we would never talk about these games otherwise. Yeah, right? or games that we're not going to make one specific video just about this yeah, game or whatnot. Exactly. So just so a chance to talk about some other games. Yeah, so we picked five categories this time. Um, I will, I'll uh, let you guys discover them as we go. Carlo's going to kick things off, and then I'll jump in after that. All right, so our first category is for a two-player game. So my two-player game under $30 recommendation is Great Plains. So this one... Just for full disclosure, I think I technically paid like 32 for it or something like that, but I did find at least one place online that had it for $29.95, so it does make the cut. So this is a two-player only game uh, designed by Trevor Benjamin and Brett J. Gilbert, uh, who've also done Mandala, which I've not played, and this is published by Lookout Games. This is an awesome little, uh, very quick playing, about 20-minute game that is like an abstract game that plays over two phases. Uh, it has some similarities to games like Fjords and Blue Lagoon, um, the basic idea is that it's a variable map setup. You uh, put out these tiles in a random uh, order kind of thing, and it makes your little map. One player is playing as the snakes, the other player is the foxes, and then you basically, there's these cave spots where each player takes turns placing three caves on the map. That's the first phase of the game, it just plays really quickly. And then the second phase is where the meat of the game is, where you start emerging from your three caves along the map, and you basically place one of your tokens. You can pick up uh, abilities of special uh, animals, like an eagle that lets you fly over these mountains, and you can get a bear that lets you push your opponent's pieces. So you're basically jostling for position and trying to fight over. It's a game of scoring these little area control sections, where there are these meadows, and whoever has the most pieces in that meadow is going to score the full points, and that's pretty much all you're fighting over. The rules are literally like two or three pages long, uh, very easy to get to the table. The first time we played this, to go through the rules and play, set up and everything took like 25 minutes maybe, um, and I was really impressed with this game. It's one that I didn't like expect a whole lot of, like the the production, like it's really nice, the way that the, the little foxes and snakes look and everything, but there was something that looked a little bit like maybe drab that happens a lot with abstract games where you never really know what you're going to get yeah. and then once we played it i think we both started realizing like oh there's some cool stuff you can do actually yeah. like using your eagle to jump over somewhere to get a new animal power or to block someone off but then are they going to use their bear to push you out of the way or yeah. which caves do you want to start off in because what area is you know depending on the setup there might be one big meadow that's worth a lot of points one game that you think that's going to be worth 10 points i really need to fight over that and other times you play it might just be that you're fighting over a bunch of little smaller areas i don't know i really really like this game um it's one of my it's probably my biggest surprise so far of 2021 um i know we've played it a couple times as well i think the last mm -hmm. time we played we tied yeah um yeah what do you think of it i, I really like it and I, it's funny because we i think you bought it and I didn't know you had bought it uh, and I was in a local gaming shop here and saw it and nearly bought it as well right. just on a whim based on what I saw in the back and obviously I I, I really love Fjords there's no uh, yeah. surprise there so the fact that it pulls certain things from it or just has some similarities I should say um, is a big win for me the first time I played it I had some questions about whether or not 
um, it was going to feel different up each time because when we played the first time, there was one giant area that seemed to be the, how the game was going to be decided. Right. And I thought, oh, if that's always the case, is that less interesting? But then the second time we played, it was a bunch of small areas and it was up in the air and we ended up tying. So uh, I really like it. I think it, for how quick it plays, for how cheap it is, um, and for how much fun it is, this is one I'm probably going to get and actually own my own copy of my collection because yeah, nice. I can see myself bringing it out in a bunch of different situations. Really fun. A big surprise for me in 2021 as well. And I, awesome. I, I haven't heard a lot of people talk about it and maybe that's yeah. just me being ignorant but um yeah it's been really great yeah awesome i think it is maybe just like the box art or something like mm -hmm. you look at it you don't really know what what the game is about or what yeah. you're going to get into but i highly recommend you check out great planes again plays in like 15 20 minutes awesome little game here yeah great pick um my game pick for the two-player category is this amazing game called Radlands, which you've probably heard a lot about recently because I think everyone's been getting their copies mm. from the Kickstarter campaign. Um, this is a fantastic game. Uh, I love it. If uh, Spoiler alert, this will likely uh, almost for sure be on my list of uh, top games from 2021. So one of my favorite games of the last year. If I had played enough of this um, in time, it may have even found its way onto my top 50 of all time, maybe next year. Um, this is a two-player card battler. We're big fans of card battling games, especially two yeah. players. We grew up with Magic the Gathering, so that was a big win for us right from the start. Um, it's pretty simple. You have lanes. Um, that you're basically protecting different, um, what are they called? Bases. Bases, yes. Um, and the bases that you have are unique every single game you play. So there's a deck of cards and you're gonna draw cards from them, I think six, and you're gonna choose three to keep as your bases for that game. They have abilities. It's gonna sort of dictate what your strategy might be for that game. You're protecting these bases with these lanes by putting these different uh, people cards um, or, um, oh my God, I'm forgetting the names. The other ones? No, what are the, the like the, when you use the backside of the card? Oh, uh, punks. Punks. Jeez, I'm going to forget every term in this game. Um, you can put punks out there that are just basically minions that help block your bases. Um, it can play super quick, or you can find that the games are taking a little bit longer. You're drawing from the same deck, so it's really interesting that we're both going to have access to the same cards. Um, and you're just basically trying to protect your bases, but there's so many unique and interesting ways that you can get around each other's uh, defenses and use your abilities to have these amazing combos. And because it plays quick, it can easily be a game kind of like Santorini, or I think you'd sit down and be like, okay, let's play best of three now. Let's yeah, play best of five. Yeah. Like, it plays fast. It's so much fun. Every time we've played it so far, I've just left going, oh my God, I love this game. Like, it's so good. I'm so happy that we ended up back in this. Um, and I think we've already decided we're going to get a second copy, so we each yeah, have one. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited to see, even if it, if it continues to do uh, well, if they end up expanding on it too. I mean, not that you would need to because there's so many options already with bases and, and you don't see every card for yourself. But I think that... Just knowing that the game has longevity too on the fact that, oh, we're going to add an expansion or another deck or more bases mm -hmm. could be awesome. I hope that they end up doing that because I love this game. It's so good. Um, and it's surprisingly, I think, like $23 Canadian, uh, which is ridiculously yeah, priced price for this. And for how nice it is too. Yeah. Like the components, the card quality, yeah. the artwork. Like it's a beautiful looking game. Yeah. So it, honestly, if you're, if you're someone who likes card battlers or if you like two-player games that are, you know, really... Uh, have a lot of variety and play quick and snappy and you can do a lot of sessions it's really hard for me to recommend anything else that's especially newer games right now i think radlands is going to quickly climb up some of my favorite my, like my favorite game lists as i play it more and uh right now it's just one of my favorite games in 2021 for sure nice yeah yeah i love how the not only are you going to see like because that deck of cards that you're both drawing from is pretty big too like in each game you're going to maybe see like a small percentage of oh, what's yeah. in the deck and even if you do see the same cards you and your opponent are both going to have different cards in play, different bases in play. Yeah. Um, the order that things happen is going to be different. And the fact that they're multi-use and you can junk them yes. allows you to have like Love different that. uses. If you're like, this card might not be as useful this game to play, so I'll junk it for the ability instead. Just, yeah, yeah. a lot of cool stuff. Even as we're talking about it now, I'm like, I'm debating, like, do we just turn <laughs> off the camera and just play <laughs> yeah, Radlands? Maybe, maybe when we're done this video, yeah. we'll play a couple <laughs> rounds. So yeah, it's I really love cool. Radlands. Uh, so yeah, brand new game, but it is very inexpensive, so I would highly recommend checking it out. I don't think you'll be disappointed. Awesome. Nice pick. All right. Now we are on to the category for uh, a game under $30 for someone new. So either as a gateway game or if you're, let's say, buying a gift for someone who's new to the hobby. Yep. So my uh, pick for this category is Land vs. Sea. So this is designed by John Paul Jacques and published by Good Games Publishing. Uh, I, if you, For anyone who follows our channel and watched our recent uh, games we want to buy at certain price points video, you might remember this. I did he pick it, it up. <laughs> yeah, right out, basically bought it right as it went in stock soon after that. Um, this is an awesome game that plays from two to four players. It is a tile laying game where one player, so it depends on the player count, but if you're playing with two players, it's basically one player is the land, one player is the sea. 
all the tiles have land and sea on them and they're double-sided and you're basically taking turns and they're uh, hexagonal tiles and you're basically taking turns placing them trying to close off uh, portions of land or close off your sea. Every time something gets closed off, you score points for it. Um, if you add in, like if you play with four players, it's a team game, so you play two versus two. One team is land, one team is the sea. The three-player game, which we haven't had a chance to try it, unfortunately, might end up being the most interesting. It's an asymmetric game where there's two of the players are still one is land, one is sea, but the third player plays as the cartographer. So they're placing tiles in an effort to create the most, uh, I guess, eye-pleasing map. Um, and so you are you can close off people's land or sea to make the map look a certain way. You score points differently. So it's a very interesting kind of three-person battle. So part of the reason why I think this would be great for a new player is that not only because of the different, um, like I wanted something that plays at multiple different player counts and that plays well at player counts because if you are new to the hobby, you don't have many games, you don't want to just have a couple of two player only games or whatnot. So the fact that it plays two to four, the fact that it has like the base rules are very, very simple, yeah. but there's a couple of little variants that are added in that say like they're kind of modular. It says you can add this variant, you can add this one, you can play with both of these. So there's all these little things where you can introduce someone new to the most basic uh, form of the game and then say hey if you like that and you want to add introduce like the caravans and the and the ships or whatever yeah. or there's the mountains and whatever so there's other parts that you can introduce that kind of spice it up and add some more complexity um, and I also think it's just a really good looking game the size of the ball like for this price point yeah. there aren't many games you can get that are of this high quality and have this much I think like kind of replayability in the box so yep. I think it just hits on all levels um, it's one that we've, we've still only played the one time uh, two players uh, but I really want to get to this to the table more and I think it's an excellent uh, either first game or a game for people who are new to the hobby. Yeah, games that uh, fit in this category super well are usually ones that are very easy to learn but it offers people the opportunity to continue to understand the strategy depth that board games have. Mm -hmm. And I, fe I feel like this is yeah. one that it's easy to play but you start to realize like, oh, maybe on the first game I don't spend as much time on, you know, uh, what are the little white X's that show up in like the, uh, in the water that oh, you can yes. try to like? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the crosses or whatever. Yeah, 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 like maybe I don't focus on that as much because you know I'm trying to wrap my head around all this concepts. But that it offers the next time you play. Oh, now I'm going to consider that more because I saw how my opponent used that, yeah. right? And the fact that on top of that, it offers three different ways to play at two players, three players, and four players. I don't know that I've seen that in a small box game under thirty dollars. Yeah. Like there, there's a lot here that offers like people that are new to the hobby, but also someone that might be buying this for the first time to start a collection. Now they have a way to play differently with all these different player counts too. Yeah. It's, it's a great choice, yeah. yeah. It's, it's just also a really fun game. For sure, and I like the aspect for new players to see that thing where you're doing something on your turn that can help both of you, but it helps you more than your opponent. Like you might finish off their sea or their land and they score points, yeah. but because you place the tile, you score for something else. So they're as a new player, you might be learning about like that type of thing, or yeah. there's also the area majority stuff with the caravans and ships. So there's other board game mechanisms that you'll pick up other than just like tile laying and whatever. But yeah. That is land versus sea. We need to place an order with Great Plains, land versus sea, and rad lands. We basically just have extra copies of yes. all these for ourselves because they're all so For good. sure. I think we both want to own all of them and even just <laughs> yeah. have copies to like give out to people. Yeah, yeah totally. that is land versus sea. All right. Uh, my choice for this category of, uh, you know, gateway introducing someone into a new game uh, is Canopy. So Canopy is a game that we've featured in a couple different places on our channel um, because I absolutely adore it and I'm very surprised with it. It's one of my biggest surprises from 2021 as well. Um, it is really inexpensive. You can get this for under $30. Um, and it plays really simple, but again, like we just talked about, has tons of strategic depth. Um, and you don't have... The first time I played this with... Um, someone I just introduced this to, they, there was a lot of strategy that they either chose to ignore or just in a first play, you know, it was too much that they didn't want to think about like, okay, I can't think about how I'm going to connect these animals. I'm just focused on my trees and canopies. And the fact is you can still do pretty well uh, playing that way. And it's, it's a beautiful game on the table with a really interesting draft system as well. So there's so many things that I think will teach people, oh, this is how drafting can work, but here's a, you know, a new twist on drafting. Mm -hmm. um, and here's a tableau builder in the same way, or not tableau builder, but like, you know. In kind this, of though, it's set yeah, collecting. The tableau, sure. some set of it goes away, but some of it stays, yeah. Exactly, but in the same way that, you know, like uh, a game like Sushi Go offers this set, set collecting, Canopy does it, but with a little bit more, um, 
I, I want to say an advanced level, but there are advanced Definitely cars and, and there's more going on that you have to think about. It's not just, oh, do I get the most of this plant? It's if I get three of this plant, it gets me points. If I get four, I get no points. But if I get five, I get points again. So there's a lot of things to consider there that I think it's going to not only teach you a lot of different mechanics with board games, but it also plays super easily. I think the teach on this is like nothing like it's it's yeah. basically really your turn is just pick a pile like that's yeah. basically all you're doing in the game so you don't have to there's the teach can be a couple minutes and then you can even just decide you're going to get into the strategy while you're playing it because they can pick up a hand and you can say okay so if you're looking at cards like you know plants you want to try to get them in sets if you're looking at animals they might have powers on them if you're looking at diseases they're bad unless you get a certain amount of them so yeah. There's a whole lot going on. It's beautiful on the table. The theme is really attractive and easy to get into with, with all the animals and everything like that in the rainforest. Um, and it plays over three rounds. It, it's over pretty quick and it's one you might want to just pick up again. So in terms of games that are accessible um, and have lots of depth and a lot to explore, I played this I think four times now, three times now. Um, I still want to go back to it. Every ten, single time I've played, I've had a bit of a different strategy. I've, I've had different cards come up in a different way that I've had to adjust. I've had to adjust my opponent differently. So I think this is one I'm going to keep coming back to and be surprised by, but introducing it to someone who has never played board games before, or it's just one of their earliest games, I think that it's going to be an easy one for them to pick up, but they're going to want to also come back to it, and that might be their gateway into the hobby. So For sure. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great pick. And this one we haven't tried yet, but it does have a three and four player mode as well, yeah. right? Yeah. And the different... Um sort of modules of different yep. cards that you can add in which we For haven't sure. had a chance to explore yet so yeah yeah that's a great pick that is canopy all right so next we are going to go into our category which is a g games that can sometimes be considered as party games not necessarily have to be a party game but games that go up to high player counts uh that are lead to laughs lead to a, yeah table. exactly yeah. a lot of laughter <laughs> so yeah. this is one uh that i don't actually own the physical copy of but it is called six nymphed so this is a game that we have only played on board game arena I absolutely love it. It plays, I believe it's two to ten players, and I would say the sweet spot is probably somewhere in the middle, like four to eight players, maybe four to right. seven kind of thing. Over the pandemic, there are a lot of games that we played uh, at high player counts on Board Game Arena, with like five or more. We played things like Coloretto, For Sale, Ink and Gold, Six Nymphed, whatever. And of all the games we played on there, I found Six Nymphed is the one that had the most trash talking and the most laughter involved. Because it's a game where basically it's very simple. You have a deck of cards. I think there's like 105 or 110 cards or something like that. They each have a number on them. And then they have a number of these little bulls on them. Yep. And basically there's rows of cards uh, where you're basically... Every player has like a handful of cards with these numbers. Everyone picks a card secretly face down. And once everyone has picked their card, you all flip them over. And then in order, you're putting these cards... Uh, into rows where they go sort of sequentially by number. So let's say I have the six, I'm going to put it in the row where there might be like, let's say a four. And then let's say the next player had like a 31. Well, they might look where's like, there might be like a 26 somewhere. Okay, that 31 goes next to it sort of thing. Yeah. And when a row fills up, when it's either the fifth or sixth card, if you were the one who placed that card, you have to take that entire row of cards. But taking cards is bad in this game because when you take cards, you lose a point for every bull that's on that card. So sometimes you so you start with a positive number of points. I can't remember how many it is, like 50 yeah. or 60. And when you take a row, you might lose like 12 points or lose 15 points or something like that. Yeah. So it's a game of trying to figure out which card do I play to play it safe so I don't end up being at the end of a row and taking a row. But sometimes... Where the laughter comes out is you sometimes realize that as soon as everyone's cards flip over and you see, and as soon as you see the numbers, you're like, oh, how dare, like, damn you, why did you play that? Oh, I'm going to end up yeah. taking so many cards now. And there's like, and then sometimes you see that one player is kind of in the lead and a couple players are trying to like send signals all across the table of like, hey, if Carlo ends up with this kind of card in this row, they're going to take a lot of points. And so there's a bit of like collaborating and trash talking at the table of trying to like screw over a particular player. Sometimes it's funny even just seeing one player get unlucky over and over and one player has lost like 40 points off the bat. They're so far behind and everyone's just kind of laughing, but you don't well, get... Well, funny except for that player. Well, but but even when it's you, it's like, it's it, you're, you don't feel terrible because you're not like, oh, I made a bunch of stupid right. moves. I'm bad at this game. Like a lot of it is luck based. There is, the more you play it, you start to see there is some skill. There is some 
ability to figure out, like to play, to make wise decisions. But a lot of the time you end up kind of like getting screwed over and it's not your fault. And it's just like win or lose. Everyone just seems to always be laughing and enjoying it. And the fact that it goes to like such a wide range of player counts and works well, like I wouldn't recommend playing this with two or three players, yeah. but if you have at least again, four or five or more, it's such a fun game. Everyone's just going to be like laughing and kind of, again, you have to play with people who I think are okay with that unlucky thing and falling behind by a lot and the trash talking. But if you have the right group for it, it's a hilarious game. The most, the most laughs I think we've ever had is when the cards flip over and someone thinks that they're going to get screwed over or yeah. like someone thinks that oh this person's going to take cards and we've just done the calculation wrong of yeah. where cards are going to slide so you're like oh I'm screwed again it's like oh no you're screwed again yeah. that's, yeah. like, oh, right yeah. <laughs> that's usually when I laugh the yeah. most and that's just like because you, you try to calculate but you never know which number's going to come out so you're like okay wait hang on that's going to go there oh wait that person no that person's taking the rope yeah, yeah. that ends up being the funniest and because it's all automated on board game arena that's where you're yeah. kind of just seeing everything happen so and yeah, sometimes you're so laughing to yourself fun. because you know you're yeah. sitting there and you don't want to say anything but you know if someone does something you're going to be absolutely just destroyed yeah. and you're just kind of laughing <laughs> to yourself but yeah yeah it's a great game yeah six nymph that's designed by wolfgang kramer awesome choice uh, so my choice for a high player account game that will lead to a lot of laughs on the table is a game that has had to tons of laughs for us, yeah. and that is uh, Snake Oil. Um, so Snake Oil is a really simple game. It's kind of like in the Cards, of, Cards Against Humanity-esque uh, uh, um, style of player game mechanics where you're going to have a hand of cards. Um, and in this one, you're basically, they're all words, and you're going to take two cards from your hand and combine those words to make a product, and you are going to sell that product to a person who, or to one person basically every round is selected as like um, the profession, the job, and you are going to basically ch uh, draw a card and it's going to have a job on either side. You're going to choose one of those as your profession. We're all selling products to that person. Um, you are going to combine two words in your hand to make a product and you're going to sell it to that profession and everyone has a like, you know an, an allotted amount of time if you want to have a timer with, associated with it to basically sell that product and that person who has that profession is going to choose which one they want to buy. Yeah. That person gets the card to keep and that's essentially points. Yes, there's a point system in this game. No, we haven't really used it very often. A lot of the time we're just, it's just a game where, you know, uh, playing at the cabin or playing with a group of people at a, at a party or with drinks, whatever the case may be. And it's just a whole ton of fun. There's so much, the game is basically just, uh, it's, it's an excuse to laugh. Like that's yeah. usually when it comes down to, we have a, a house rule where you have to add in a jingle as well. Sort so, of infomercial style. Yes, yeah. which usually makes it 10 times more fun. I would highly recommend that. Um, as an example, um, you know, one, we had one that was, I think the profession was babysitter. And then I think I had, um, one, the two words I combined were rubber and cave yeah, and I did the rubber cave and the idea was it's a rubber cave where you can just it's a cave you can throw the kids into and they just bounce around and it, it makes your job as a babysitter a lot easier it's a very uh, convincing product pitch yeah, by the way yeah exactly so there, it, it's it's so ridiculous. It's so absurd, um, and it doesn't have to be. I mean, you can you can go in and have like legit products you're trying to sell, but generally that's the way it goes. Yeah. Um, and when you have a lot of people, the best part about it is that I will be the first to admit, like a lot of times, if I'm in a group with a lot of people I don't know, I don't often want to necessarily be like speaking to a whole group and presenting well, right? especially doing something creative where you feel yeah. like you're on the spot you're almost performing for sure it's not not everyone's gonna be comfortable with that the great thing about with the way we played snake oil is that we don't we don't necessarily say you have to go in a turn order we can just say like who wants to jump in next or who wants to sell or who wants who doesn't want to sell a product yeah, yeah. this time right like do you i don't have a product to sell i'm not going to sell one because then if someone feels uncomfortable they can kind of watch and gauge how the the group is playing and then decide oh you know now in this next one i'm going to jump and i feel comfortable so yeah. in, in, especially if you have sort of social anxiety or you just find that in group settings you don't want to speak up as much this is one you can sort of sit around enjoy and then just jump in when you feel comfortable um but we've never had a session of snake oil that isn't just devolving into us all in fits of yeah. laughter so it's super fun it's su super hilarious um, try to make the the most ridiculous products you can you'll have the most fun with it and if you want an extra added twist do our house rule where you add a jingle on because i think that For makes sure. it so much funnier so yeah yeah this is an awesome game great yeah. pick and one that doesn't get enough love like i never really see people talk about this as a as a party game but uh, yeah. yeah i highly recommend it as well fun fact uh it is under 30 dollars but 
and I and I when I paid bought it, I think I, I paid under three dollars. But the first time I ever saw snake oil was at our local game store here, and it was listed at like seventy five dollars. What? Yeah, it was seventy five dollars, and that's why I didn't buy it because I had heard about it and Jeez. I wanted it. But at that point, I don't think you could find it anywhere, right. so I think that's why it was more expensive. But it's literally just a deck of cards in this box. This is a gigantic yeah. box, and it's just a deck of cards. You do not need this box. So for seventy five dollars, it was a ridiculous. Yeah. Under thirty is much more appropriate, so I highly recommend it for that price. Nice. Yeah. All right, so our next category here is a game that has beautiful table presence. So my choice for this uh, might surprise you. This is Truffle Shuffle. So this is designed by the crew from Flat Out Games uh, and published by AEG. So what makes this game stand out in terms of the table presence is, first off, like the actual artwork on the cards, which I think is done by Dylan Mangini, is just beautiful. Like it's really attractive. It's got these nice colors. It's got these delicious looking truffle chocolates, just like you can see. I'm glad uh, you called them delicious because games that have table presents that make you just want to snack are extra points. Oh yeah, my mouth waters when I play <laughs> this game. Uh, so it not only has the nice looking artwork on the cards and everything, um, but even just the choice of the colors that they've used for the game, the, the kind of color palette's really, really nice. They've got this kind of like pastel uh, kind of look to it. Then it's also got the pyramid layout similar to Seven Wonders Duel, um, which, I mean, I'll show you on the back of the box, but you basically are just like laying out these cards in a pyramid, and the way the game basically works is you're just taking a card from the pyramid, and as an optional second thing on your turn, you can play a set, which is basically selling truffles. So you're basically collecting different uh, colors of truffles with different numbers on them, and then you're basically doing poker-style hands where you're either doing like three of a kind, or a straight, or a flush, or whatever, and the better the hand of cards that you're selling, or the better set of truffles, you get more money back. So another thing that adds to the table presence is the sort of like chocolate gold coins. Um, they're just like these like kind of thick cardboard pieces, but they do look kind of like those actual you know, chocolate coins that yeah. you see that, that people eat. And so it's just, it's a that, game that, that, that people eat. That people eat. I know, <laughs> yeah. as I said, I like, those, things those, that get eaten by people because they are food. Those chocolate coins that people eat. <laughs> yeah, <Those> sometimes. People. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a game that I didn't expect the table presence to, like I didn't buy it for the table presence. Yeah. I bought it because we like stuff by Flat Out Games. Mm -hmm. It's like an $18 game. I thought it'd be nice, another fun one to have that plays quickly, is a good like, plays two to four players. I think it's best with three or four. It's okay still with two, but I'd recommend it with three or four. Yep. But just seeing all the colorful, delicious looking truffles out on the table and everyone's chocolate coins, like it's simple, right? It's just the cards and the coins, but it's a really nice looking game, especially for this price point. Uh, I think it's something that if you were playing and you were maybe like at a family gathering or at a convention, wouldn't be surprised if people stop by to kind of take a look because it is a very eye-catching game. Um, but it's also a great game and one that I definitely recommend you check out. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to add because it's been a while since I played, but I just, I, I will say I really enjoyed it when I played it. I definitely wanted to eat all the, all the things that are on the cards <laughs> and it's making me realize that I absolutely think we should definitely sometime soon do most delicious board games oh for sure because there's so many games that i like i'm already thinking of i don't want to spoil them all but like i will say obviously i've mentioned before like the the pieces in the original azul make me think of starburst, like starburst yeah and there i could get into a whole bunch but there's so many games that we have that i, I look at the piece and i'm like oh god i want that candy now. <laughs> you <laughs> yeah. know what i mean the berries in everdell <laughs> yes the squishy oh berries. i forgot about that too that's a great one i was thinking of the eggs in wingspan looking like mini, mini eggs, eggs. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's so many we should absolutely do most delicious yeah. board games so honestly let us know in the comments which board games you think are most delicious <laughs> so we can start looking into them in preparation for that video definitely yeah great pick cool yeah that is truffle shuffle uh so my pick for this category of uh table presents under 30 dollars is arboretum we have talked about this game a whole bunch um this is a beautiful looking game on the table and i'm 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 i guess i'm specifically talking about this version of arboretum the other version mm -hmm. is also beautiful as well but this one is especially beautiful on the table um the funny thing about this one is that yes, the table is going to look beautiful. And if you walked by a table with people playing Arboretum, you go, oh man, like what is this game? This mm. looks great. It is also one of the meanest games <laughs> that yeah, sure. we own. So uh, it's a game that's going to look beautiful, but that's sort of just to counteract the fact that you're going to uh, form a lot of, uh, uh, break a lot of friendships <laughs> playing Arboretum. Yeah. Uh, it is really mean and you're going to be making decisions that are specifically just completely hampering someone's strategy or leaving them with no points in a category. Um, because, but again, you're going to look at the trees and you're going to feel a little bit of, of zen and you're going to feel like, you know, it's okay that I just got completely obliterated this game got zero points because, man, these trees look so beautiful on the table. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's a game that will look really great, but it is honestly just a fantastic game to play. I wouldn't recommend it as uh, a 
a two-player game as much, yeah. um, or at least we wouldn't. A lot of people do. Um, Definitely best with four. Yeah, 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 best with four. Uh, but yeah, at three or four specifically, um, really, really great. It's going to add a whole bunch of extra trees into the game that otherwise wouldn't be in the game. So you're going to see a much, bunch more variety on the table. It's going to make the table look super colorful, but you're going to be making some really harsh decisions uh, that, uh, yeah, is going to make you, I think, want to come back multiple times. And uh, as long as you're okay with that. If you're someone who doesn't like a lot of, you know, mean uh, player interaction games, maybe this might not be for you. Um, but if you're somebody who doesn't even care, you just want your table to look beautiful, Arboretum is the way to go. So Nice. Yeah, that is Arboretum. We've both talked about a whole bunch. We featured on our top 50 list game, yeah. and stuff. Yeah, awesome game. Nice pick. Mm -hmm. All right, and our final category here is basically a hidden gem. So this can be classified one of two ways. Either it's an unknown game that just a lot of people don't know about, or it could be a game that you think isn't rated highly enough that people know about it, but say it's not very good. So think of it as either an underrated game or sort of something unknown. Yeah. So my pick for this is going to be Village Green. So this is designed by Pierre Sylvester and published by Osprey Games. And I'm looking at this definitely more from the... Um, like hidden gem point of view of like not many people seem to know about it. I think as of when we're filming this, there's only 800 uh, ratings for this game or rankings on Board Game Geek so far. Relatively unknown. It came out in 2020. Uh, you might recognize the name Pierre Sylvester. He usually so this is actually the only game of his I've played so far. I have The King Is Dead at home, but haven't tried it yet. He's usually known for making these slightly heavier, like medium weight Euro games. A lot of the time they're either uh, politically themed or very historical themed, like Brian Boru that came out this year as well. This is just a simple little card game that has some similarities actually to Arboretum, which we just mm -hmm. spoke about. You're basically building out a little tableau. It ends up being a four by four grid of 16 cards. You have um, basically along the left side and the top row like that column and row are going to be these award cards which are going to determine what you score for those awards based on what is in the corresponding rows and columns so on your turn you're drawing cards to either add into your tableau that are your uh, like trees and ponds and those kind of things or you're drawing an award card to place that's going to determine what you're scoring there um, and i like the little tagline on here that says a game of pretty gardens and petty grudges because what you're trying to make is a pretty garden, but the petty grudges comes into play because of the fact that you can take cards that you think, uh, you know, someone else might want that's going to, you know, screw them out of something. There's these little, you know, it's you, and I think it, there's a solo mode as well, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, one to yeah. five players. So the player count's good for this too, and I mentioned as a hidden gem, because the fact that it's, you know, you're kind of just trying to see how many points you can score out of the combination of awards and cards. Sometimes you end the game, we played this once together with two players, and certain awards didn't even score us points because yeah. we didn't get the right cards we needed or you couldn't match up the symbols. It's kind of restrictive with where you can place things because you have to be able to place them next to other symbols or colors that match. Yep. It's a tough little puzzle to figure out, and it's a little, it has a bit of that frustration that a lot of our favorite card games have, where you're yeah. sitting there trying to figure out, like, oh man, how come I feel like I can't get this done, and like, how come I can't score the points here? It's something that makes me feel like I want to keep coming back to it, and the fact that it has that kind of player count from 1 to 5, I've heard people say it's even really enjoyable as a very quick, like, 10 to 15 minute solo game. On the box, it says half an hour. I can see that with more players, but I wouldn't be yeah. surprised if it plays in 15 to 20 minutes solo, which I haven't actually tried the solo mode yet, but uh, yeah, it's a very like sort of understated game, one that flew under a lot of people's radar. I thought I would take a chance on it, and I was very pleasantly surprised, and it's one that I definitely want to try uh, much more. Yeah, I was I was super surprised by this game. I didn't know anything about it when you introduced it to me. I really enjoyed it, and I think that something we maybe didn't say at the start, um, something we didn't say at the start of this is that all these games, in one way or another, we're considering really good value because mm -hmm. they're under thirty dollars, yes. and you're getting a lot of them. The fact that this has a solo mode, the fact that this has a lot to um, explore with, you know, having it's almost like a bit of a it's, it's different, but it's in the way the point salad. You, you choose yeah. what you score for. No, for sure. Every there's game. some similarities there. Yeah, every game you're going to score a little bit differently. So there's a lot of things to explore every single time you play. You can have a different strategy every time you play. Yep. I think that that's really good value for, for how, you know, what you're getting for a little small box card game. Right. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy you introduced this to me and I'm really happy you picked it up. Cool. One thing I wanted to mention about that I just remembered that's also interesting about the game is that on your turn, you're either drawing cards to add to your hand or you're playing cards. So it's not that you like always play a card on your turn. So the game has a variable time or two where yeah. I might finish completing my tableau and you might still have two or three empty spaces because yeah. you spent your turns drawing cards or covering up your rewards with other things. So yeah, just very interesting little game that I feel like is going to play differently every time because of the different cards and sort of the speed that it goes at. So yeah, yeah that is Village Green. Nice little hidden gem.
Great pick, and uh, my hidden gem is a new version of a game that we both love, and that is Biblios Quill and Parchment. So I, um, I, I would almost, I wonder if you would even consider the original Biblios to be hidden gem because some, some people talk about it a lot and some people don't seem to know about it at all. Like, right. Right. So I guess it depends what podcast you're listening to or what uh, videos you're watching. Yeah. But this version of Biblios or other versions of Biblios even, I, there's versions of Biblios out there I didn't even realize yeah, existed. Yeah. So I feel like there's, this one's going to go under a lot of people's radar. It is a roll and write version of Biblios, but it retains a lot of what makes Biblios such a great game. It finds a way to in a roll and write formula still have that sort of like um not, yeah, i guess auction mechanic but in, yeah. a, in a roll and write form and what's even more special about this game is how great i actually thought it was at uh solo mm -hmm. because yeah roll and rates you know you almost want them to be good at solo games because you know it, just like yahtzee you could play yahtzee solo and just be like how quick can i you know how right. what, what what is the best score i can get yeah this one does it in an interesting way where it realizes you can't really do the auction with only one person. Mm -hmm. So it, it reduces the auction, removes the auction, but adds in a whole bunch of other elements that still make it really interesting at solo. But I'm just I'm just super surprised by this game. As someone who loved Biblios and, you know, also loved Lost Cities, Lost Cities Rolling Right came out and and we were like this cannot replicate what Lost Cities is doing, and it's also not doing it in an interesting way. It's just sort of saying, here's this in a different way, in different form. Yeah, it felt pretty right? standard for a role, yeah. right? It didn't do anything all that novel or interesting that made yeah. us want to come back to it, really. Whereas this one does a whole lot of interesting things. It has the two-phase um, uh, thing retained from Biblios in a role, right, which is really interesting. It has yeah. this, like... Uh, church section where you're sort of moving up the pews, which is really interesting. Um, all the things you're doing with your dice are, are like you have to sort of build up a sort of um, in the first phase, build up a I don't know if it's not, it's not income, but you're basically having as high a number you can from what you've rolled to basically use those numbers in the second phase of the game. Yeah, yeah. There's a whole lot of interesting stuff going on. If, if you're someone who has played Biblios, I would recommend playing this, but if you're someone who has not played Biblios at all, I'd also recommend checking this out because you don't necessarily have to have that knowledge. And I think that as a roll and write, it's still just a really interesting game. Absolutely. Yeah, a really surprising game for me in 2021, and I hope more people. Uh, discover this game because it's really really good yeah i don't think we've ever played a roll and write like you said that has like two phases that feel so very distinct where you're doing stuff and then in the second one using the money to take your dice yeah. in different ways and the fact that you also we didn't even mention the little um thing that the i think it's called the novice travels around the little road yes it's like course. another little section that looks like a little painting on the wall that we were like whoa this is another like yeah. there's multiple sections on what is a pretty tiny sheet um, yeah, it does yeah. a lot with a lot of mileage. Yeah. yeah, and I think that, I think this. Is an, I'll put the price on the screen, but I I, I would have already done it. But I, I think it's under thirty dollars, and I think it's like yeah, twenty five, twenty four, something, something yeah, like that. Yeah, might even be less. Yeah, somewhere yeah it'll be there. on the screen. It'll either make us right or wrong. But uh, either way, really good value for this, and I think that a yeah. lot of people who like rolling rights and play this will end up having this rank among their favorite rolling rights is really good cool yeah. i will say uh so jeff who we played it the yep. once the three of us jeff went out and bought it yeah and i got to play it with him recently as well as a yeah. two-player game yeah. and i will say i haven't tried it solo yet i definitely think it worked way better with three than with two right because with two you kind of have to play with a fake third player right. and some of their decisions kind of matter but some of it doesn't it, it it wasn't entirely satisfying playing it with two i think yeah so i'd be curious to try it solo but uh i imagine three and four is probably the best yeah. player account for this i was surprised by the solo mode i will say that but i had way more fun when you played with three yeah I okay that. yeah cool yeah. that's great pick. quill and parchment nice so yeah those are all of our games under 30 dollars for those categories uh as dylan mentioned earlier let us know uh, you know, what categories did you like most? Mm -hmm. Which categories do you think maybe you could do without? What are categories we didn't cover that you'd like to see next time? Yep. Uh, you know, do you want to see us do videos more based on like a specific type of mechanic? Like Dylan said, worker placement, tableau building, whatever. Yep. Let us know. We're open to any feedback. We'll definitely be doing more videos like this going forward. Yeah, I think uh, like just hearing the categories people would be interested in is, is one of the most uh, interesting things for us because for sure. we'd like to do videos like this more often but we want to feature new categories every time maybe there's certain categories we bring back but i think if people are just interested saying you know out of all these game mechanics i love give me some 30 dollars options right like if that's yeah. something you're interested in let us know because we would love to feature more affordable games for people and even never so often do one where it's you know here's some more expensive games if you're looking to splurge sure. here's some options that you can think of so let us know what you most want to see and those are the games we like to or those are the categories and uh you know frameworks we like to feature yeah yeah otherwise that's it for this video so thanks so much for watching as always and uh, we'll see you next time